Hello everyone, I'm Alex Dykes. On today's Child Seat Review, we're taking a look at the 2014 Toyota Sienna minivan. This is a Grocco Classic Ride 50 Child Seat, and we're gonna see how well these interact with the minivan. Now obviously any minivan this Toyota Sienna included is designed to be family friendly. You'll find very similar performance when it comes to child seat installation in the Dodge Caravan, the Chrysler Town & Country, the Honda Odyssey, the Kia Sedona, etc. So instead of comparing this vehicle to those competitors, which all do very well in this segment, I'm really going to be focusing this video on the Toyota Highlander. And I think that that's a valid comparison because if you're shopping for a Toyota Sienna or a Toyota Highlander, then the alternative is going to be right there on that Toyota lot. And why should you pick one over the other if you're a growing family? One of the big reasons to pick a Sienna over a three-row crossover is that we do have these sliding doors. Now versus a regular hinged door like this, if you're going to be uh, ducking in and out of the car to try and get a child seat in and out of the car, you're going to need the door open as far as possible. And if you're in a tight parking situation, it's just a little bit trickier to get a child seat in and out of a car with a traditional hinged door. But if you have a sliding door, you have this enormous door opening right here, and it's much easier to get a child seat in and out of the car. You'll also find a much lower load floor in the minivans. That means this floor that I'm sitting on right here is closer to the ground. We do have less ground clearance going on in the minivan, but also in general, the minivan's design, it's just designed to have a lower load floor. And we also have a load floor that's almost completely flat in the Sienna, as you'll find in most minivans. So there's no hump in the middle to sort of interfere with foot traffic or with installing child seats. First up, we have the rearward facing child seat test. And I realize I'm in the front seat of the Sienna, but there's a reason for that. You can see that I have about uh, six or seven inches between my knees and the dashboard, and that's because this front seat is all the way back in its tracks. I'm now in the third row of the Highlander, and you'll notice something very different back here than your average three row crossover. And I'm not talking about this second row moonroof and sunroof right here that's actually cutting down on my headroom. Now, my head is touching the ceiling just barely. I would have a little bit more headroom if we didn't have the optional sunroof in our particular Sienna model back here, but I'm really talking about this bottom seat cushion. It's a decent amount higher off the floor, which makes it much more comfortable for adults or taller people. Now, if I move this second row seat back in its tracks, this uh, seat will actually slide for me. If I pull the right lever on it, I can actually adjust this second row seat to where I have about a half an inch of leg room right here. Now let's move around and see what that does to the child seat in the second row. And right here we can see the prime reason to buy a minivan over a three-row crossover vehicle because I had a six-foot-five passenger in this front seat at six feet tall. I sat in the third row seat right behind the second row seat. In the second row seat, I can still install a rearward facing child seat and have an acceptable amount of room around it for safety reasons. Now you will find approximately this much rearward facing child seat room in the Sienna, the Town & Country, the Odyssey, as well as the Sedona. Like most minivans, the Sienna is fairly wide, so I had no trouble fitting three child seats across the second row of an eight passenger model. But since this is a seven passenger model, I only have two seats in here right now, this forward facing model and this rearward facing model right over here. If you've ever wondered why top tether anchors on child seats are so long, the answer is vehicles like this Toyota Sienna, because if we get the seven seat option, we have these captain's chairs in the second row and the top tether anchor is all the way down here at the bottom right by the release lever for the second row seat and you do need an anchor that's this long in order to actually use that tether location. Now that this belt is all the way cinched up you can really see what this looks like so we only have about four or five inches of this belt webbing left and that's really just so you can pull it tighter. This is about as far as you can have a child seat top tether anchor away from the seat itself. The Sienna is one of the very few vehicles sold in the United States that has three sets of latch anchors. We have one right here in the back bench seat and that is just in the center of the back bench seat and then we have one set in each of the outboard seats right here in the second row. That's the same whether you get the seven passenger or the eight passenger version of the Sienna. The eight passenger version of the Sienna does have an extra top tether anchor for the center position in the second row, but it doesn't have a set of latch anchors for that center seat position in the eight passenger version. On the right side of this child seat, I do have a decent amount of space. And that's because the Sienna has a much wider third row than you'd find in something like a Highlander or a Dodge Durango or anything else in the three row crossover segment, even those that do seat three across the back seat. And that's just because the Sienna is wider across the back right here. I will also comment that this is a good example of why this uh, latch anchor system in this third row is a big deal in the Sienna if you do plan to install three child seats in a car. That's because uh, right now this child seat is not installed using the latch anchor. You can see the bottom of the child seat especially wiggles around a decent amount even though this seat belt is attached properly to the child seat. That really doesn't happen if you use the latch anchor system. As a result, the optimal place for three child seats in a Sienna is two, one on either of the outboard second row seats, and then one right here in the middle of the third row. That's because the seats will all use the latch anchors, which will prevent excess movement of the child seat. Because of the way the back row in a Sienna is designed, I have a little bit less room over here on the left. 
and that's because the 6040 folding seat right back here in the Sienna, um, most of this 60 portion is actually occupied by this child seat. So if we do have the child seat installed and then two people on each outboard seat position, we don't all get a third of the seat room. That outboard seat right over there on the right side gets a little bit more room than I do over here on the left. One thing worth noting is that with these Grocco Classic Ride 50 child seats, because of their high height, I did have to remove the headrest in the second row seat in order for the child seat to be properly installed. It is, however, very easy to remove. Now be warned that if you do have child seats in the second row captain's chairs and you are trying to put people in the third row, the best route of getting back there is actually right here through the middle. And the reason for that is the second row seat cannot collapse on the child seat like this, like you find in something like a Nissan Pathfinder or the Infiniti version of that Nissan Pathfinder. That really can't happen if the child seat is properly strapped into the seat. And although the second row does slide very far forward like this, it actually touches the front seat back of the front seat. It is a little bit tricky to get in the rear through the limited amount of room that you still have left right there. And if I pull this second row seat back, you'll also notice another problem. You can't escape sideways this way from the back row because this little release lever right here only tilts this front seat back forward. And of course, since tilting it forward doesn't really do anything for me, I can't escape out this way. So I do have to get out around the middle of the seat like this, if that second row is all the way forward like this, and then move the seat all the way back and then get out of the vehicle. Not surprisingly, it is pretty hard to beat the cargo space provided by any minivan when you compare it to a three row crossover. In fact, full size SUVs typically don't have the same amount of cargo room that we do in a minivan. So right here, hiding under this load floor, I have a 24 inch roller bag. It's the largest one you can carry on a domestic flight. I also have a 26 inch roller bag over here. This is larger than you can carry on a domestic flight. So you can see I can actually stack them right over here and they will still fit behind that third row. And then I can very easily toss in one child seat two child seats, and the third child seat, I'll sort of toss it in the reverse right there. And as you can see, three child seats don't even come up to the back of the seat back in the third row in the Sienna. This right here is truly why you would buy a minivan over your average three row crossover. Yes, we do get a wider third row bench seat. We also get real usable third row seats, but we also have enough cargo room that you can take five or six people for a short trip and fit five or six people's worth of luggage right here in the back. Now, if we do fold down this one portion of the 6040 split folding child seat, you can easily carry six people in this van and six people's luggage away for a weekend. Now, I will be the first one to say that I understand the anti minivan stigma because my mom drove a 1988 Plymouth Grand Voyager for years and years and years. So I really understand the anti minivan crowd. Pretty much we just don't like to drive the kinds of cars that our parents used to drive. And even though I did run around as a small child in a station wagon for a short amount of time, my formative years were in minivans. So I personally don't see anything wrong with a station wagon. Even taking that stigma into account, however, I have to admit that if I had a growing family, I would put a Sienna or any of the other minivan options on the market over a three row crossover right now. You don't get really any more towing capacity in the three row crossovers. You don't get any more all wheel drive prowess. This Toyota Sienna is one of the few minivans available with all wheel drive. And it is exactly the same all wheel drive system as the Toyota Highlander. The same engine, same transmission, basically the same all wheel drive system in this minivan as we have in a Toyota Highlander. The off road capabilities honestly are just about the same. Now we do get a little bit more ground clearance in the Highlander. And while that will allow you to go, uh, you know, mild off roading, and I'm talking about gravel or dirt roading, not true, true off-roading, the Sienna will be right behind it for the most part. Now on the flip side, the Sienna is going to be much easier to get in and out of because the lower load floor, lower load height, etc. on the inside is going to make getting in and out of this vehicle, especially with child seats, an awful lot easier than any three row crossover. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Again, I'm Alex Dykes and this has been the 2014 Toyota Sienna minivan. This has been the limited all wheel drive version that we've been taking a look at right here. If you want to know more about the Toyota Sienna minivan, then go ahead and click that subscribe banner at the bottom of your screen and you'll be updated on all of my latest videos, including the full review of this minivan when it comes out in about a day or so. You can also find me over at facebook.com slash alexandautos and you can always send your emails and questions to alex at alexandautos.com.